NBC News correspondent Jay Gray. He joins us from Tel Aviv. Jay, good morning. So President Biden said last night that Egypt agreed to open this Rafah border crossing to allow aid into Gaza on Friday. It's the only border that is not with Israel. What do we know about this plan? Is it any closer to getting started? And what did he say about Israel's role in facilitating that humanitarian assistance? Yeah, it certainly is a lot closer, Savannah, certainly much closer than when he showed up. And look, the headline in the Tel Aviv paper today says Biden dictates rules of the game and that dealing specifically uh, with that delivery of aid, food, water, as well as medicine. They haven't had that in the region for two weeks. And, and these are two million or so people trapped in the crossfire. And, and there's been an outcry for this aid to move in. Uh, we know that they are repairing roadways right now at the Rafa border crossing. Uh, that were destroyed during Israeli bombing runs. They expect to have the first of 20 trucks rolling in tomorrow with this desperately needed aid. And what the president said about uh, Israel's commitment to all this was that regardless of the battle continuing, this is what is the right thing to do humanitarian-wise. Listen to, to what he talked about. The truth is that if they have an opportunity to relieve suffering of people who are, have nowhere to go, um, they're going to be, uh, it's what they should do. And if they don't, they'll be held accountable in ways that may be unfair. If you have an opportunity to alleviate the pain, you should do it, period. And if you don't, you're going to lose credibility worldwide. Yeah, and the president has said that the U.S. will provide $100 million in aid. One thing, there's no indication of the duration of these deliveries, Savannah. We don't know how long this is going to last. Jay, also, I do want to ask about something else I mentioned at the top of the show, which is more Israeli bombs yeah. dropping on Gaza. It includes an area that were supposed to be safe zones. That's according to the Associated Press. And then over in the occupied West Bank, there's been a surge of violence as well. What is the latest in both places? Yeah, and we've seen some of the video from uh, bombs that have struck just a block from hospitals in the area, and that's something, obviously, that is a very sensitive uh, subject right now after the loss of hundreds in that explosion uh, just a night or so ago. Uh, we do know that there is escalations in the skirmishes between Hezbollah fighters and the Israeli armor, uh, army along the uh, Lebanon border. In fact, this morning, we know that anti-tank missiles were launched toward a kibbutz in the vicinity of the security fence along that border and that the IDF did respond uh, with artillery fire. So those fights are growing. More troops are moving into that region. You've got more equipment in the area as well. And there is a big concern that this could become another front, another part of this military mm -hmm. war. And, and if that's the case, it, it's got a, a chance to spread across the region. Very concerning and very tenuous right now. Jay, we do also have some new information this morning about that horrific hospital bombing. So the White House National Security Council actually took what is a rare step for them of releasing a statement saying Israel was not responsible for the blast at that hospital that killed hundreds in Gaza. They pointed to evidence, a group that it was a group called Palestinian Islamic Jihad. The intelligence's video, images of the incident. Is there any sense on the ground, do you know, from within Gaza that there's recognition of that, that this might have been this accident on that side of the border? Or, or is it still simply being seen as the U.S. backing its Israeli allies? Yeah, I, I think that it does, uh, in many instances, feel like uh, people believe that this is just the U.S. supporting someone uh, that uh, they are backing in this war. And you can see some of that in the protests that have spilled out across the region, thousands uh, surrounding mm -hmm. U.S. embassies, surrounding Israeli embassies, pulling into the streets, and more protests expected this weekend. So, yeah, I think there's still a lot of doubt, uh, a lot of confusion, and, and clearly everyone in this region on edge and not ready to just accept Except carte blanche what's being said. Jay Gray, thank you very much for your reporting. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.